Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Parish. My name is Pam Strobel, and I'm the Parish Life Coordinator here at St. Thomas. I believe with my whole heart that there are no coincidences. So back in January, when we were preparing for Lent, and you know, we're coming out of COVID, and what does this look like, and what can we have, and how can we gather people? We still didn't know all those answers. But I was praying about what we could provide for our parish. Not a large mission, but an opportunity to share the word of God, to reach out to those of us who I've heard have been broken in many ways these past two years, as a community, as individuals, as families. And one day in my inbox, I got an email from Matt Tiedema, a dear parishioner, longtime parishioner. And he said, Pam, have you ever heard of this Kevin Matthews? He's here from Grand Rapids. He's here in Grand Rapids. Why don't you take a look at this video? So I watched the video and I was intrigued. I knew that we all needed to hear this message. And when I approached Father Jim and staff, they were very supportive. So today, it is no coincidence that on March 20, the day after the Solemnity of St. Joseph, here in the midst of war in Ukraine, that we need to come and pray for Russia, for our nation. And Mary has her hands around us. I was told many years ago that I don't worship her, you know, I, as a cradle Catholic, I don't worship her. She's just a mother. And just like my sons come to me often with their concerns and needs, and they want me to go to dad, <laughs> or it's easier to go to mom before I go to dad. That's what Mary does. She brings our needs to Jesus and to the Father. If you would please join with me before we begin in prayer, before we begin with Kevin, can we pray just a decade of the rosary together? To begin this, let's offer it for the conversion of Russia, for the conversion of hearts, for those who he need to hear this story. Oh, I gave you my purse. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray this rosary again, as I said, for the conversion of Russia and for the conversion of all those hearts that need to be open to the Lord Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The first glorious mystery is the resurrection. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Just a little housekeeping before we begin. For those of you who are not familiar with St. Thomas, we have restrooms in the lower level. So there's a staircase on this side of the church and there's an elevator on that. The men's restrooms on that side, the female, the women's restrooms on this side. So our special guest today is former radio personality, Kevin Matthews. He's from Grand Rapids. He went to college here, was married here, and his first son was born here. Kevin Matthews is now a successful author and has written one of the most popular books 
books and circulation at Dynamic Catholic Publication. With partner Matthew Kelly, his rosary apps are downloaded throughout the world. Kevin Matthews is also one of the most recognized radio voices in broadcast history, especially here in the Midwest. Kevin became a household name in Chicago and spoke to over 10 million radio fans weekly while broadcasting from the iconic Loop Radio Studios in Chicago. Matthew was recently named to the all-time list of top 20 radio entertainers among his radio peers and will soon enter the Radio Hall of Fame. But he would say that is not what really matters. In the fall of 2008, his wonderful world came crashing down while on the air. He became partially paralyzed. God was calling Kevin and he's here to share this incredible journey with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kevin Matthews. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, whoa, hey now. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. First of all, how many, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> How many used to listen here in Grand Rapids LAV? Just raise your hand. Okay, good. Um, how many people have no idea who I am? <laughs> I, that's what I love. See, I, I always say this, that you have like a really good guardian angel until now. <laughs> until now. And it uh, did it best, but now. So I, I just want you to know it's a beautiful day, so I'm going to make this quick. So for the next four and a half hours, <laughs> no, not four and a half, three and a half, okay? No, I promise you, because Michigan State and Duke, okay, we, you know, yeah. Um, is, is, is happening, but it, it is really honestly a pleasure to be here. I, I really mean it. And a couple of things we gotta, everybody has to know, first of all, this is not about me, okay? You're not here because of me, Kevin Matthews. No, 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 no. It is, um, you've been called. You literally have been called. You've prayed for this. Look at there, I wanna say, also, there's no such thing as a coincidence, okay? There's no such thing as a coincidence. I honestly believe now a coincidence is, is proof. It's a way God is going to nudge you. Wow, what a coincidence. What a coincidence. Look at Matt, who is a parishioner here and wrote me on Facebook Messenger, which I never, I hate Facebook Messenger. <laughs> In fact, I'm in Facebook jail as we speak. I, I am. I'm always in jail. And it's not what you think. A friend of mine who's a priest, I know a lot of priests, a lot of nuns now. A friend of mine, uh, Father Mark, who is over at St. Anthony's, and he knows I'm here today, and he goes, oh, you know what, you're really going to love that parish. Great people, great priests, great, you're going to love it. But Father Mark, last week, had a heart attack. I'm kind of guilty because we're both on diets now. And, uh, but I, he's on Facebook after a heart attack, and I'm going to try to do my homily. And I said, Father Mark, I'm going to kidnap you and take you for the next three months. Well, red flies, kidnap, kidnap. So I'm in Facebook. I am. I, I'm like, are you kidding me? I got to promote this show. How am I going to do that? And I, you know, really on a side note, Really good. I open my phone, my iPhone, and it says today, you're down 60% from your screen time this week. I'm thinking, good. I'm good. Just good. But here, I hardly ever opened Messenger, and a while ago, during the winter, you know, I get this message from Matt. And hi, I'm a cab head, and... I'm in Grand Rapids, and I go to St. Thomas, would you like to speak? And it's like, of course I would love to speak, you know? And I wrote him, and I gave him my phone number, which is kind of, I'm trusting, you know? And, and he calls and then gets a hold of Pam. But the thing is, 
you're witnessing a miracle today. You really are. And I'm not saying that I am the miracle. Trust me. But it's no coincidence, folks. We're all being called. It is so beautiful to watch this happen. It is so beautiful to watch Our Lady work. Now, people, hey, you know, it's been a while since I got onto radio. I've been off radio and whatnot. But I still love it because I get a lot of people that will come up to me and go, hey, when did you become a Jesus freak? <laughs> oh, thanks. That's nice. And I, I always tell them, I go, because it's in the book, I say, uh, at the age of four is when I became a Jesus freak. That's the age of four. What do you mean? And, well, you know, I grew up in Pontiac, Michigan, Ooh. Uh, north of Detroit. Yeah, anybody, I can go down to the worst part of Detroit and say, where are you from, Pontiac? They go, okay, great. Leave him alone. But there was, <laughs> you know, I mean, Pontiac was, whoa. And... I'm four, and I'm Catholic. You know, I was, went to St. Vincent's, and I didn't go to Catholic school, went to public school, but still catechism and nuns, and I'm, you know, but the thing is, is inside my house was a war zone, okay? And I love my dad, and I don't want to be on the Oprah show today, but my dad drank a lot, yelled a lot, just, there was a war going on inside my house in Pontiac, and then there was literally a war on the outside because of all the rioting in this new place called Vietnam. And I watched as a little, little kid, you know, Oswald being shot on TV, and it was just I, I, this little kid. And I can remember literally, I would go up to my room, you'd hear screaming, you'd hear sirens, I'd cry. I'd say, God, I want to go to heaven. I remember that. God, I want to go to heaven. Little four-year-old. God, I want to go to heaven. Well, here I am. I'm not in heaven, but you know God is with us all the time, especially a little child. Are you kidding me? You don't think God takes on these little, little kids? Of course he does. He never left me. He's always had me. I've let him go many, 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 many times. You know, and you hear all this stuff about you know, what I did on the radio and some of that's like, oh man, you know, I can't believe I'm alive. But it was a good time, especially I, Pontiac, I chased this girl who, I worked in a drugstore, I was 16. If I wanted, like, clothes, get a job. You want a car, get a job. Insurance, get a job, get a job. So I, my brother was like the store manager of Perry Pharmacy in Troy. And so I'm 15, I start that, and I'm, you know, I'm going back and forth, I'm in school and stuff, and I fell in love with this girl named Dawn. She was so beautiful. She took care of the cards, you know, like Hallmark cards. She was so beautiful. And I'm up in Rochester at this time, because we had to move from Pontiac, because it was just, I'm going to be in jail if we don't leave. And I went to Rochester went to middle school with Madonna. I didn't marry her. Um, I did. I went to school with Madonna. Oh my, my sister knew her really well. And anyways, we didn't get married. But um, I fell in love with this girl. And then eventually, I'm 18. And I decided, Diane's going to go to Grand Valley. And it wasn't a university then. It was just five college. Remember those colleges? Jefferson, all hippies. Oh, man. She's going to go to Grand Valley. I don't know where that's at, but I think I'll follow her. And, you know, that's stalking these days. <laughs> so I apply. I'm like the worst. I, they let me come in. Are you kidding me? And I get up there, and we do one term together, and she dusts me like an end table. She ends up leaving, going to Ferris. I'm all by myself. And I went to Grand Valley, and I was going to go into education. Think of that. <laughs> you think education's a problem now? <laughs> think of I were back then. And I, I, I got involved in radio, and I liked that. And it was uh, my, I met my wife, Debbie, who, speaking of miracles, Debbie and I got married at, um, in Grand Rapids, the uh, church, St. Mary's, right by the hi highway. Yeah, been there. 
40 years ago. We just celebrated our 40th anniversary. Think of that. We were so young. We all were young back then. The raft race. Da, 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 da. And I, we got married. Then I, we had uh, Trev, my son, who's a great musician. He's out in California. And he was born. I'm doing radio at LAV and you know, when we were doing radio in LAV at that time, I don't even remember, one of the big promotions I did was Wiz Over Russia. Speaking of Russia, see how it comes full circle now, huh? <laughs> Russia left the Olympics and I sent a case of cheese Whiz to Moscow and how stupid is that? But made me successful. But, you know, but we had literally 67% of Grand Rapids, West Michigan, listening to the morning show. L.A.V., Eris, Ed Buchanan, all that. Tony, everybody. It was great. Then I got hired real quick. Went down to St. Louis. More money. I was eating cat food up here. <laughs> I mean, it was like, are you kidding me? $25,000? I can make $25,000 in St. Louis? All right. Last nine months... I want my job back at LAB. All of a sudden, I'm sending Steve and Gary tapes over at the Loop. They go, you should really hire Greg Salk and this guy. So I end up going to the Loop, AM 1000. We're in 32 states in Canada. Nobody buys. We, we went from an FM to an AM, and everybody, our grandparents were listening to AM. We went there. We were in 32 states in Canada. We revolutionized the way people listen to radio. Literally, we were the Rolling Stones of radio. We were high school with money. <laughs> Anything we wanted to do. And I was there for about 30 years. And then, you know, if things, radio technology, the iPhone, satellite, look at the newspaper. St. Thomas, our bulletin here is bigger than the Grand Rapids Press or the Detroit Free Press. <laughs> I mean, it just happens. And, you know, XM radio and satellite, and, and so it started to implode. And I decided, you know, I really want to go back where it all began, here in Grand Rapids. I really did love Grand Rapids. I loved, I had a chance to go back with Ed Buchanan and do the morning show, but I could program, I could, I could start radio stations. So, um, Trev's in L.A., Teague, is, my daughter, is going to finish high school, I'll commute for a year. No big deal. And so I'm commuting, and I commuted for three years back and forth because of the housing bubble. And I'm doing the morning show, and the year is 2005. It's Tuesday. I'm on the air with Ed Buchanan, LAV, 716. There's the clock. I suddenly can't move. I can't move my hand. I can't move my leg. I think I'm having a stroke. It's Tuesday, 716. I said, I, I didn't play records back then, everybody. I talked. And just right, I talked and annoyed people with Ed. And I got, went to a commercial break and said, Ed, I can't move. You know, and that was a Tuesday. By the time I drove myself back to Chicago on Friday, I went to the hospital on Friday of that week and first of all think of where am I on the totem pole of life I should have been at St. Mary's or you know I wait that long then I find out they took an MRI and this neurologist you know said we found something so I take Debbie to this neurologist in Chicago and I'm sitting there with her and she goes, we found something in your brain, the size of a walnut, but it's in your brain. And I said to my wife, I said, well, see, honey, at least I have a brain. <laughs> and it's in my head, not where you always are telling me it's at. <laughs> what about, but again, I'm thinking, you know, what's in my brain? I'm making jokes. And the doctor said, we think this is a tumor. And if it is cancer we can't operate where it's located. There's nothing we can do. So go home, we'll take a bio of your brain, go home and prepare for the worst. 
So we, I did. And think about that. You know, you're going, whoa, am I going to have a funeral? What's going to, what, I, what am I, you know, it's just, it hits you. It hits you. So I go back to the hospital, and I'm thinking again of the three stooges, and they're going to drill into my head, and there's Mo, and, and woo, 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 woo. <laughs> and they're an hour away from taking me into surgery, and the neurologist comes in and says, guess what, it's not cancer. You've got a very rare form of MS. Mus multiple sclerosis. I didn't even know what I, what's that? Muscle, what? That's good, right? Good, good, yeah, yeah. So Deb and I are jumping up and down. Well, the treatment for that begins. And that was tough, still is, you know, still is. I'm, it's just tough treatment. So I want to day here, and we are going to be able to get out. It's a beautiful day. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. The, the real world is out there, and we can jump back in there real, real soon, but I just really, it means a lot that you're here, because I want you to know that we're all being called. You're all very, very special. But I want to, Pam was talking about, um, here, hopefully I won't fall, um, although that would be fun. I brought some things. There's no such thing as a coincidence. That happened to me, and again, my, my wife, while I was working in Chicago, on the loop, I worked at ABC, CBS, in the year 2000, she and her mother went to Fatima, Portugal. They went to Europe, but they stopped at Fatima, Portugal in the year 2000 on Mother's Day. And she bought this booklet, brought it home, so when I'm getting diagnosed in hospital visits, the only thing of religious value in the house, and I was Catholic, the kids, they were baptized, communion. I was the weekend warrior, you know. I'm going to go to heaven, right? <laughs> but this is the only thing I had of any religious value. And so I would put this in my pocket and go to treatment. Look at her. This is Mary. And there's no such thing as a coincidence. Our Lady of Fatima, and I would take that. And I want you to real quick run the parallels of what's happened to me, Broken Mary, you, and especially what Pam was just talking about, how Fatima is back in the news. Is that a coincidence? No. And I... I want you to know that Fatima, 105 years ago in 1917, starts with God. Yes, Mary appears to three shepherd children, a 10-year-old, an 8 and 7. Lucia, Francisco, Jacinta. But it starts with God. The angel of peace goes to the children and prepares them with prayers from God. So everything starts with God. And that's where it started with me, with God. I'm driving back and forth. I'm still not here. We don't have a house yet. I'm back and forth. I've got a little apartment on Plainfield, back and forth. And I had, it was St. Patty's Day in the spring, St. Patty's Day. Uh, and I remember I, it was St. Patty's Day. I couldn't take the Stevenson Highway because all the floats and the parade. And, and whatnot, and this is the year 2009, okay? So I take the Eisenhower, go out to the Eisenhower, as soon as I get on the Eisenhower, and by the way, it's in the book, my mom used to say, I always used to hear voices. I used to do voices on the air. Jim Shorts, dig that, right? Right? Yep, yep. Jim's in the book, too. But I get on the Eisenhower, and I'm driving, I hear a voice that says, go to the cemetery. Go to the cemetery. Clear as day. Go to the cemetery. I know what cemetery that voice is talking about. Because Debbie and I, there's a big article in the Chicago Tribune about apparitions of Mary and God at Queen of Heaven Cemetery. You can go there now. It's still apparitions, whatever. That's where Al Capone is buried. That's off Wolf Road. 
and it's huge. And I, we used to take the kids. Everybody used to take the kids when the story came out. Yeah, you do feel kind of cool. Yeah, I feel something. Don't you, Deb? You know, and I, that was the cemetery. So I'm driving, and as I'm getting closer to Wolf Road, the exit, I hear the voice again. Go to the cemetery. So I decide I'm going to take Wolf Road, and I, there's the cemetery. Now I'm driving, driving, driving. This is a huge cemetery. And I drive right to the apparition site, but they've replaced the apparition site now with this huge cross of Christ. I mean, it is big. The, his feet come up to here. I've got this in the truck. I decided I'm parked. It's a beautiful day, just like today, not a cloud. I decide I'm parked. There's the cross. This is in my, I, I take this. I decide I'm going to walk to the cross. Boy, doesn't this sound like Jimmy Swaggered? He's going to walk to the cross. But I decided I'll, I'll take this, I'll go up, and I, I put my hand on the feet of Christ. And at that moment, I really, you know, I'm kidding about the three stooges and da-da-da. I put my hand up and I said, God, I am so afraid. Help me. Just then, as soon as I said, help me, there's water running down my hand. It's coming down. It's wet. It's coming down. I could not move my hand at all. I couldn't do this. I was really worried about how am I going to do the radio show and the computer and stuff. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do this. Suddenly, my hand's working. I rub some on my head. I rub it on my leg, and I get back in my truck, and I drive to Debbie. I don't go see my attorney. I drive to Debbie, and I say, Debbie, my hand works again. Look at it. It works again. The next day, yeah, it works. Three days, week later, completely forgotten that. On with my life, back and forth, back and forth. Whatever I want to do, <clears throat> back and forth. Fatima starts with God. Next to Fatima, the children, it's Jesus who comes to the children. The angel of peace who brought prayers now brings the children communion, Christ. Okay, God, Christ. We finally sell our house. I'm living here, Debbie's living here, and I just signed a five-year contract with LAV, and Friday I get a call, boss wants to see you, new boss, you're fired. Wait, I just signed a five-year deal, sue us. Sue us. Uh, here's two weeks severance pay. And I felt like Ray Liotta in Goodfellas. And he's on the porch. I mean, are you kidding me? This is all I get? And this, the red sauce, it's ketchup. What is, I, I'm in radio. I'm an icon. Two weeks notice. And I'm starting to think, how am I going to feed Debbie and I? How are we going to pay rent this new house? Little did I know, real quick, Debbie and I, when we first got married... Here in Grand Rapids, I bought insurance in case I ever got sick. I'll never forget that. Notice how God's got a plan. But still, I'm fired. What am I going to do? I've got MS. I'm fired. I'm at D&W thinking, how am I going to buy groceries? What am I going to do? That Saturday, in the car, I hear another voice, oh, another voice. Go buy your wife some flowers. I look up, there's a flower shop. No coincidence. I said, yeah, she deserves flowers. Drive in, it's November. It just snowed, one of the first snows. I hate snow because I got MS and I'm going to fall. And so I get out of the truck and I'm walking towards the flower, the door, the entrance, and I look over and all of a sudden over I see a dumpster dirty dumpster, and I see an image, a statue of Mary lying on the ground on her back. I, I know it's, you know, from here to the door, and I, I, I just know that's Mary. I walk over to it. Yes, it's Mary. She is on her back. She's broke in half at the waist. She's in two pieces. She has no hands. She's sunk into the ground. She's got garbage on her, dirt on her, 
And then I look at her, her face is looking up at me. And I hear another voice that says, will you deny me? Will you deny my mother? Stern. Will you deny me? Will you deny my mother? And I went in to the shop. I'm the only one, little bell. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to buy that statue that's out at, by, it's laying next to the dumpster. Oh, we can't sell that. That's a family heirloom. <laughs> then I hear the voice again. Will you deny me? Will you deny my mother? And I'm thinking, I'll steal it. going to work. Just then, and then I prayed. I closed my eyes. This all happened so quick, just lightning quick. I said, God, who I remember me at the cross that I bailed on, help me. Just then I just vomited, <laughs> not literally, but just these words came out. I said, I'll give money to the nuns that live out around here. And she looks at me. She goes, I know that. You're Kevin Matthews, aren't you? You got fired yesterday. <laughs> what happened? You got fired. What happened? Yeah, I got fired. Da, 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 da. But again, no such thing as a coincidence. Help me. You know, here we're talking. I said, listen, I really would love it if I could, I'll give you money. There's nuns out here. Some, you know, I'm really, I'll give money if I can just take her. And she goes, okay. So I don't buy flowers for my wife because... <laughs> I'm selfish and I'm a guy. <laughs> and I just, I go out and I go to the dumpster and I hate to talk about women's weight, but I have to. She's heavy. <laughs> okay, seriously. So I go and I pick up the bottom half and I'm picking this up and it's concrete. And I've got these slippery shoes on that are just, and I'm walking and I'm walking and walking and walking and I get in the truck put her down and make a little bed. Then I go get her second half, and I'm walking, 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 think I'm going to fall, I'm going to fall, 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 fall. That's my walk. Walk, walk. Put her in the truck. I put a, make her a little bed, you know, and I get in my truck, and I turn the car on, and, and the radio comes blasting. I'm turn that off. I'm never going to listen to radio again. I hate radio. <laughs> so it's just me and Mary. I look at it now, me and Mary. And I literally said to myself, literally, I said, Mary, I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. And I drove home, and the next day, she's out in the garage, and I called Father Mark, who had a heart attack, who made me on Facebook jail. And I'm starting, I know Father Mark barely, but I call him up. I said, listen, Father Mark, I found this statue of the Virgin Mary laying next to a dumpster. It's broken two halves. Where can I get her fixed? He told me about a monument maker that is literally on the west side. I can show you if you want. After this, we could all drive. Okay. I'm Duke, Michigan State. Remember that. And so I, in the spring, I, I load her back into the truck, and I go out to the monument maker and he looks at her and he goes, yeah, she's in two pieces. Yep. What we can do is I can put her back together. I can put new hands on her. I'll paint her. She'll look brand new. Won't even look broken. Nobody is. She'll look brand new. And for the first time in years since I got diagnosed and everything, I just broke down. I had, I'm, I'm, I'm rock bottom. I said, no, I don't want her to get fixed. She's broken like me. I said, she's broken like me. Just put her the two halves together, keep her hands, just, I, I, and something, I'll call her Broken Mary. I'll call her Broken Mary. She's Broken Mary, just like me. So I pick her up eventually, in about a month, I bring her into the house, not the garage. I set her there. I call Father Mark again. I said, listen, I got this statue. Would you come over and just bless it? Which he did in time. He came over and blessed it blessed our new house, blessed her, and that is when the matrix happened. Everything starts to happen. And at that time, I'm still smoking, 
cigarettes, you know, I come out in my gym shorts, and Mary in the dining room, and I have coffee unemployed. Hey, Mary, how are you? <laughs> Got it together. Yeah, yeah, great, great, great. And it is, it, it's not as though, it's Christ saying, you know what? I'm going to leave you with my mother, and she's going to clean you up. What a gift. I didn't know back then. There's no book. You know, I'm not dynamic Catholic. No, 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 no. Whatever. What is Mary going to do? The first thing she's going to, she did for, with me, she's going to teach you the rosary. And there was a couple of things that happened. You know, today's homily, if you remember today, is about Moses and, and Jesus, the bush, what? Or Moses and God, how does, how does God talk to us? How does Mary talk to us? How does Christ talk to us? Is he going to send us a text? We have to listen carefully. We have to listen differently. God is talking to us. Seriously, folks, we're baptized. We're, we're children of God. Mary's going to talk. God's going to talk. Christ is going to talk. You're gonna, he, you're, he's going to keep talking and asking and asking until you answer. And so one of the things that happened was I just had this craving, this desire to recite the rosary. Literally, I really did. And I didn't know anything about the rosary. Lent's coming up. I'm going to go to church now a little bit. Maybe I'll do Lent. Haven't done that for about 28 years. I know, I'll learn how to say the rosary, right? I'll do the rosary for Lent. I said to Father Mark, I'm going to say the rosary for Lent. That's cool, right? I'm smoking in my gym short. So all of a sudden, Lent's coming. I don't know how to say the rosary. I had to Google how to say the rosary. So I Google how to say the rosary, and this little audio thing comes up, and it's an Irish priest. I know he's Irish. He says he's a priest, and he's doing the rosary, and it's really scratchy, scratchy, scratchy. I'm hearing it every day, every day. I'm going, you know, I could do that. I got a good voice. I used to be on LAB before they fired me. What, I wonder if I, I could make one of those, right? I could make millions. <laughs> That's what I'll do. And so I say to Father Mark, I'm going to record you. And then all of a sudden, yeah, he's like looking at me like, he knows. Yeah, sure, Kev. He knows, he knows, he knows. But what happened was I did start to investigate the rosary, and I'm doing the rosary. I didn't know the rosary was a gift from Mary. It's a gift from God, but she gave... A rosary, our first rosary, came from Mary to Dominic in France in the 12th century. How cool is that? Then I'm reading Dominic's mom, while she was pregnant with Dominic, used to breathe that she was going to give birth to a dog that breathed fire. And I'm thinking, I want to be a dog that breathes fire. How cool is that? What's more? What's more? more, 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 more. I, I was cleaning out our, our bedroom once, and Debbie, all these books, and there's these books piled on I'm on. And again, I'm re just researching the rosary, and I also read this book online about Louis de Mumford. And I go, Mary? I'm talking to her now. Just like Wilson? <laughs> That's what we're doing. Mary? <laughs> I want to read that book. I got to get that book. I went in, took a break, went into the bedroom, and there's these pile of books with this and other books that Debbie had bought and on Lourdes and just mountain of books. On top of the mountain was Louis de Mumford's book. I, I have that. And suddenly, things become clear, okay? And then, suddenly, I'm starting, how does God talk to us? The reason I say this is because today's homily, God talks to Moses through a burning bush. Try to explain that one. Yeah, I'm out in uh, Ada and a bush is on fire and I'm talking to it. <laughs> but all of a sudden, besides I'm learning the rosary, I'm also I having dreams about roses. I'm not kidding, roses. And... Before I got fired, there was a woman who had a seven-year-old boy named Oliver, 
and he had cancer and he was getting treatment at DeVos Children's Hospital. And all of a sudden, I, she's calling and you know, I'm getting more and more involved with her and Oliver. And the first photo ever taken of Broken Mary is with a little boy, seven-year-old Oliver. He's got his hands wrapped around Mary. And he was having treatment. And I also had dreams to buy a rose for every child at DeVos Children's Hospital who has gone through cancer treatment. Now think of that. I'm unemployed. How am I going to buy roses? And I called up Bing uh, Floral, Eastern Floral, and I said, Bing. He goes, yeah, Kev, you got fired. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> um, I said, Bing, listen, I found out, because DeVos Children's Hospital at that time is not old. It's still, it's, you know, I'd found out there's 3,000 children have been treated. I need 3,000 roses. He said, sure, I'll do that. And we put the roses together, and we had a display. And the first time I ever brought her out in public, I was at DeVos Children's Hospital, where the kids and parents could come down, and they'd see and smell these roses. And suddenly, we got press on that. Kevin Matthews, who got fired from LAV, remember him? <laughs> who smokes in gym shorts. He, but we got press, and it started to go out, you know? I'm doing the rosary. Well, Father Mark says hey, remember you made a promise to God that you'd give money to the nuns somewhere out there? <laughs> Time to pay up. I know them, they're the Franciscans. And I'm going to take you out, take the statue out, and come and tell the story, how you found her, and, and whatnot. So I did. And again, I just found out that, that these dates on Fatima and, and, the, and the 13th. So I go out. To the Franciscan Center out in Lowell. I got Mary and Father Mark and these little nuns, Franciscans have a height requirement. <laughs> they do. I, I'm, I'm making an observation that I'm going to give to the Pope that they, if you're over four foot, you can't be a Franciscan. <laughs> you know, you can be a Carmelite, Dominican, fine, but they, with their little brown habits and they all circled me and I was like Richard Dreyfus in Close Encounters. I mean, I have... <laughs> All these nuns. And just then, it's so funny because, you know, I, I'm having dinner and Father Mark says, hey, Kevin, why don't you tell the story? And I say, I show him and I, I told him about the flowers. And, and I said, you know, I kept her broken because she reminded me of me. We're all broken. Yet we're loved by God. I remember saying that. So we get done with the night. Father Mark's driving home. And he has, that's a good homily. We're all broken, but we're loved by God. He calls me the next day. He goes, Kevin, why don't you, I'll start the homilies on Sunday, and then you finish and tell people. That'll be the homily. We're all broken, but we're loved by God. Do the 7.30, the 9, and the 11.30. Of course, I can't say no. I say, sure, I'll do that. I mean, how hard can it be? I used to work at the funny firm. I've done comedy with Seinfeld and 65,000, Mike Meyer, Dana Carvey. Well, no problem. Yeah, I can do that. So I go to church, I have Broken Mary, 7.30 Mass, I'm going through, I'll never forget that, and I'm wrapping things up, we're all broken, there's Mary, and I'm getting ready to finish, and that voice that I heard at the dumpster comes back and says, say a Hail Mary for my mother. Not kidding. I'm thinking, I haven't said a Hail Mary since fourth grade, when a nun was grabbing gum out of my mouth that I was chewing, I'll never forget that, like a bass, Rapala. I mean, she just had just... So I said, okay, we're going to say a Hail Mary, and I, I get through, and I did it. Okay, now comes the uh, 9 o'clock Mass. I'm saying we're all broken, da-da-da-da-da. I hear the voice again, say a Hail Mary for my mother. We're going to say Hail Mary, do it again. I'm dying. I'm thinking, I get done with the nine o'clock. I go to Father Mark. I go, you know, I really don't want to do the 1130. I really don't. I'm dying up here. I know I'm dying. I know I'm dying. He said, why don't you take a look at the statue? And there were people on their knees in front of Broken Mary. On their knees. I did the 1130, said a Hail Mary. But all during those masses, not only did I say we're all broken, but 
I also said, she doesn't belong to me. She belongs to you. If you know somebody who's sick, who's broken, take her. And so for the next three years, people took her inside hospice. She's died with people. You should see the rosaries that's above her. Another dream that I had is to buy thorns, crowns of thorns from Jerusalem and put them above me and hang these roses, rosaries. And you can see that. That's at St. Anthony. That's from Mary. One of the most beautiful, humbling things. She's been in prisons. She's been around the addicted. The most broken have come, have died, have been with her. And so people took her and took her and took her. And then people were talking to Father Mark and the stories and the press and the things are starting to come along. He goes, you know, you should really write this down. You, should, you might want to write a book. There's that much happening. He goes, you know, one of the nuns you talked to that night is a, a writing professor at Grand Valley University, Sister Lucia, not from Fatima. <laughs> Although, it's good. She, I, she, we'll have lunch. I'll arrange lunch. So we had lunch out at Vitali's. I'll never forget that. It was before they moved and everything. So we put her in a little booster chair to eat. <laughs> and I am so Huck Finn at this point in my life, man. I'll have, are you kidding me? She's a writing professor. She can write a great book. She'll do all the work. And I pretty much pitched that. She looked at me and she goes, I'm not going to write the book. And I go, well, I don't know how to spell. <laughs> Think of that. She goes back to Mother Colleen Ann, and she's still alive. If you don't believe me, go to his sister. She goes, there's no way am I working with Kevin Matthews. Have you heard his show? He works with Howard Stern. Has. He's Satan. <laughs> he really is. There's no way. So I, literally a week later, she, sister calls me. She goes, okay, I'm going to help you. She, she said it kind of that way. And I, she goes, this is how this is going to work. And all I think of that nun in the gum, you know, it's just like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm still smoking. Okay, what? She goes, okay, I'm going to ask you a question, and then you're going to write th the response. Okay, tell me about your college radio station. Are you kidding me? Okay. I unloaded. That was really, a, I'm starting to go to confession. Oh, okay, I'll tell you about that. That's at Grand Valley, Thomas Jefferson College, a professor who used to house, he used to drop acid for two days and build computers and do radio shows. Are you kidding me? That's where I learned all about Miles Davis, Frank Zappa. We couldn't be out there. The more out there, the more accepted. We had such, we lost the station actually because of me, because I said one day, I was doing the morning show out there, I didn't want to go to class because no clock, everybody, no phones, everybody listen to clock radio, right? So I said that Father or uh, President Lubbers had been murdered <laughs> and the whole campus is a crime scene. No school. Oh, man. <laughs> it was a good bit, right? And uh, they shut me down, she took the station away, the FCC, it just closed it down. It became a hair salon. It's all there, it's all written. <laughs> Look it up, WSRX. So anyways, she's, I can't believe this, and so she keeps asking me these questions, you know, throughout the year. And now I'm starting to actually record. She's helping me and others are helping me with diction and the rosary. The rosary, that, to record that, that took so long. So. From, it's now like 2015, 16, the rosary app. I went to a friend who makes apps, who happens to be atheist. He decides, yeah, I'll make you an app. That atheist now is a believer in Mary. And, you know, it's just beautiful. So it's 2016. Lots have, lots has happened. I have a book, a draft of a book that's ready. Sister goes, the draft's ready. You have to read it. And we go all checking for spelling, just read it. And I, I remember I, I had this draft and I read it. I, first page, second page, go down and read it. 
And I had to put it away because it took me back to Pontiac. It took me back a fourth. Seriously, it's written so well. That book is not, that book is a beautiful book. That book is the author's God. Seriously, produced by a nun, written by a horse head, I guess. But it's relatable. And I, she, we finally, she, she sends it to the three biggest publishing companies in America. They all want it. She can't believe it. They all want the book, Kevin. She really is kind of liking me now, a little bit. <laughs> Matthew Kelly wants it. I can't believe Matthew Kelly, do you know who he is? No. He, go, go, Matthew Kelly. So we go, and I'm, I got a book with Matthew Kelly, Dynamic Catholic. And at the same time, at that time, behind this book, there's a, a website, and I decided to write it. It was Thanksgiving 2016. Got the book, got the app. Mary's going to hospitals all over the place. I wrote this and said, I'm Kevin Matthews. I have this statue. Well, would you like to talk? I'd like to meet you someday. And a few weeks later, this woman, Joan Alex, she calls me, writes me, calls me, and she's with Fatima Portugal. She goes, why don't you... Um, you should, really in, she, those, you should really come here for the 100th anniversary of Fatima. It was the 100th anniversary. So we got the book, and um, $10,000 is what we got to sign. So I took that money, and I bought sister, the Franciscan, little one, uh, a seat, Father Mark, myself. We're going to go to Fatima Hotel, 100th anniversary. And... That was supposed to happen as well. The 100th anniversary. The rosary is so dear to me at this point. The rosary app is out. Within two weeks, the atheist calls me. He goes, Kevin, do you know the rosary app on Apple has been downloaded over 300,000 times? Mostly in the Philippines. Wow. 300 thousand times. And then I remember reading a story, every time you say a Hail Mary, a rose blooms. And I've always wanted to just make the biggest rose garden for Mary. And that's how come I'd love to do that. And so we're on our way to Fatima. And we're arranged to spend a week in Fatima. I'm writing for uh, the Cathedral magazine about our experiences. And I can't, I, I honestly recall when I got to Fatima and the closer I got to the apparition sites, I got so sad. So sad. The closer I got. And, you know, how does, how does Mary talk to us? I can't explain it. We met a nun in Fatima and she is the author of this book, Sister Angela. She was born in Fatima, Portugal. She has a little girl. She's a nun. She's a doctor. She's also the postulator for Jacinta and Francisco. Her work, plus the Pope and all the research, they become saints. She is coming to Chicago. I brought her here many times. She's now the vice postulator of Sister Lucia, who Mary in Christ appears and says to Russia in the consecration of Russia, that's Lucia, not my Franciscan, the Lucia. This book is one of the most profound books I've ever read in my life. It's from my friend who I met in Portugal, Sister Angela Inside the Light. This book is talking about how important Fatima is today, 2022, in Grand Rapids, on this day, more than ever. I've never in my life. I love this book. And so we're down in Fatima for the week. I got invited to recite the rosary at the apparition site. Think of that. Two years ago, I, didn't even, I had to Google how to say the rosary. And now I'm at Our Lady's apparition site reciting her rosary. If you know anything about Fatima from May through October... In 1917, on the 13th, Mary comes to the children. 
in August, the children were isolated. They couldn't go to the apparition site. They were basically being held against their will. Well, Mary does appear to them in August in the woods near their home, and there is a statue that has been erected at that site. And during Fatima, Father Mark and the Franciscan nun, they go to where Angel of Peace is. So I'm by myself in front of Mary. I'm sitting on a bench. There's the statue where Mary has appeared. And I looked and I said, well, I wrote a book and I've got two rosary apps. Now what? As soon as I said, now what? I thought, again, so quick, lightning bolt, how derogatory. And as soon as I said that, something whizzed by my head that I felt and it smashed on the brick ground, shattered. And I said to myself, whatever that was, if it would have hit me, would have killed me. I look at it, it's a pine cone, big pine cone, seeds. Mary says to me, plant the seeds of my rosary. That's it. Plant the seeds of my rosary. That is my mission in life. Plant the seeds of my rosary. I still have that pine cone. Before I left, where Sister Lucia, who was going to be the saint, who had Mary and Christ come in 1929, say, go to confession, rosary, communion every first Saturday. That same nun, she had a, there was a statue of Mary with her bleeding heart, and I'm sure many of you have seen it, with thorns in Mary's heart. I literally, I had been to confession, but I also at that time confessed to Mary, I, Mary, caused your heart to bleed. Before I left Fatima, I looked at that bleeding heart, I said, I caused your heart to bleed. I will take the biggest thorn in your heart and I promise you, I will never hurt you again. I will never shame you again. I will never, the women, just everything, I bow to you, I will care for you for the rest of my life. I will die for you, Mary. And we left Fatima. So much has happened. So much has happened. And before we leave here today, I want you to know there is no such thing as a coincidence. You're being called. Listen. How many of you want to go to heaven? Some of you not sure? <laughs> I don't know, Kev. The lions look pretty good this year. <laughs> Sister, while I was, she was here in Grand Rapids like two years ago, she said some beautiful speaker. Just she, She's a doctor, young, beautiful speaker. And she said that question, she, Kevin, do you want to go to heaven? I said, yeah. Do you know you have to be a saint to go to heaven? I said, well, why are you saying that? I'm not going to go to heaven then. <laughs> she goes, no, not a, not a canonized saint like Mother Teresa. You have to be sanctity, sanctity, sanctity. You have to, guys, we have to earn the grace of Mary. We have the virtue of Mary. You have to be kind. You have to be a saint. We were born to be saints, all of us. God makes us saints. Not priests or pope. God does. We were born to also be disciples. You really were. You are. You are. You're being called. And I guarantee you, after I leave today, you're going to hear, will you deny me? You're going to hear it. You're going to hear it all the time now. Will you deny me? Will you deny my mother? You're going to hear it? Answer. You're being called. And I think, be a saint, be nice. I think God, he hangs out at Meyer. I do. It was like, heard that, and I went to Meyer on 28th Street, the real busy one. And it was during the holidays, and the line was so big. Man, those are slow lines, aren't they? And I'm watching this clerk, and I'm getting closer and closer. After about an hour, it's I'm next. But I hear that beep, 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 beep. And this woman has been listening to this all day. And I remember that. Be a saint. Practice what you preach. I went up 
And she looks. I said, how are you? And her name was Ruth. She looks up and she goes, good, how are you? And I go, well, have you been here all day? Yeah. I go, man, you're really, really, really busy. Yeah. How, how much longer you have? A couple hours. Then I looked and she had a button, a football player. And I said, who's that? She, That's my son. Oh, what's his name? He told me his name. Where does he go to school? Michigan. He's a linebacker. But we were having this conversation. And it was such a nice conversation because it just broke. Just nice. You have a nice day, she said to me. And I said, God bless you. When was the last time you said that to somebody? God bless you. You don't have to be a priest to say, God bless you. God bless you. Be nice. Try that. 28th Street, Meyer. <laughs> be nice. I'll tell you what, folks. It is amazing to watch Mary work. It really is in these times. We are literally living in the Valley of Tears. We are. We are living in the Valley of Tears. You can turn on the news. Wow. But spoiler alert, God has never lost a battle. Don't focus on the storm. God is coming back. Mary, this woman is so amazing. This past year and a half, The rosary is everything to me. The rosary is from Mary. The rosary is Mary's hand. I wear my rosary. I don't take this off. I don't dare take this off. We had problems putting the Apple app together and that little Franciscan nun after. We were getting so delayed because there's a word being spelled. She goes, Kevin, you know, Satan hates you. Like, oh, here we go. Hates you. You left him. Hates you. Hates children. Give me your hand. Said, we're going to say a Hail Mary. Said a Hail Mary. Gave it to Ed and it, it, it all worked. And I started to hear that. I heard a, a priest once that I really, really liked. Say, God's got a plan for you. So does Satan. Wow. Getting dressed today. You know, sometimes what am I going to talk about? I don't have any notes. Every time I've tried to prepare notes, they disappear. I'm not kidding you. Tell the truth. Tell them what you don't want them to know. And I wake up this morning, what if nobody's there? And I hear that voice, I'll be there. Pam, we talked about that. What if, who's going to come? Whoever is coming is supposed to be here. We were met for the first time last week, and I came into church. There's something about children I was speaking down in Indiana just three days ago for Legatus, and in the last pages of my book, I speak about a child and how the child, the child, the child. And I'm leaving the hotel in Indianapolis with Mary on a little, you know, I'm taking her out to go to the car. And this little four-year-old, because I've got grandkids, I can spot him, he's about four. He goes, Mama, Mary, there's Mary. She goes, yeah. He goes, where's Joseph? <laughs> and, you know, I'm getting in my car ready to drive back from Indiana, and I really, look at how beautiful that is. You're just, God, just saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. Thank you for doing this. Matt, thank you for writing. Thank you for coming on a sun, beautiful sunny day to be here. You're being called. You're being worshipped as well. God worships you. Jesus worships you. Mother Mary worships you. She calls you daughter, you son. Think of that. When you have devotion to her rosary, you are now her son, her daughter. That is so beautiful. The three little ones from Fatima. In May, when they first saw Mary, Mary asked them, are you willing to suffer for God? Not that Mary wants you to suffer, but we suffer. We're in the Valley of Tears. And they all said yes. Think of it. The message, the most important message of our times that's coming back relevant today with the Pope going to 
canonize Russia or, you know, consecrate Russia and Ukraine, which it's been done before. People say that, well, it's been done before. Well, I've had my rosary blessed many, many times. Debbie and I have had our marriage blessed again and again. It's good. What's happening is good. To hear people on MSNBC or Fox or whatever talk about Fatima. What is that? Fatima? Mary? It's beautiful watching this woman work. But on the second, when the children went home on, in May, little Yusinta, she is seven. She's the cutest one. She's cute. Then Francisco, brother and sister, and Lucia. Lucia says, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anybody that we saw Our Lady. Don't say anything. Promise you sent her, and you sent her, of course, of course, of course. They get closer. Parents are out there. You sent her, just runs up. Mommy, mommy, I saw Mary. Mary's here. Mary, 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 Mary. Well, of course, you sent her's parents, Francisco and you sent her. They believe my children. Lucia, mother, didn't believe. Why would our, woman, our lady come to you and slapped her? Was mean to her. The suffering starts right then. The suffering starts right then. The second visitation, May, June, Lucia says, are we going to go to heaven? She doesn't want any part of this now. She's getting hassled at home. And Mary says, yes, you are all coming to heaven. Francisco and Jacinta will be coming to heaven very soon. Think of that. And Lucia says, what about me? Am I going to be alone? This is to me profound that I want to leave you with. Mary says to you, Sinta, no, my daughter, I will never leave you. My immaculate heart, you will be brought into my immaculate heart to be with God. Mary's always with us, always with us. I say the rosary is Mary's hand. And when you hold Mary's hand, you're holding the power of God. Think of that. And you can ask, and that's power, beautiful power. It's her umbilical cord. That's how she feeds us Jesus. When we say the rosary, if, you, if you're in a room with your mother, if I, you were my mom, and we're in a room, a living room, and I say, Mom, you're going to look up. We say, Hail Mary. Mary's like with us. Mary mystically comes to our side with the rosary. She mystically comes. It's a mystery. We don't know how. But she's mystically with us by her side. And she wants us to become Jesus. Not just Jesus-like. She wants us to become Jesus like her son. The rosary is the story of the life of Jesus. That's what I love about it. Mary's always thinking of others. At the wedding feast at Cana, the first miracle, we're out of wine. Jesus calls her woman because she becomes the woman of the universe, queen of heaven and earth. Mary said, she didn't say, listen to everything I say. She said, do as he says. Mary is always, I, I have people that say, you love Mary too much. I've been told I'm going to go to hell. Seriously. I said, I'll never love Mary more than Jesus. I'll never love Mary more than Jesus. The most broken have come to her. This is a concrete statue. I've had people, you, you idolize, you worship. No, I, yeah, I worship Mary. I do. I worship my mother. To me, when I remember when I danced in my wedding, that dance, that mother-son dance, that's what I do every time I recite the rosary. I dance with her. I love her. And, but the most broken are coming. I've been over at Ionia prison. The book's big over in the prison. Lifers. And I've had lifers. Now they're holding rosaries. And I had an inmate who said, I'm going to die here. And I said, yes, but you get to choose 
where you want to go. You get to choose where you want to go. Go to confession. Mm -hmm. I love God. I'm sorry. I'm so tired of people blaming God for everything. If there was a God, why is there a war? Why are there kids hungry? Why, 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 why? Why? That's a good question. He gave us everything we need to feed children, to protect children. God doesn't send us to hell. We do. We do. God sends us to hell. God loves us. One of the things in my life, I've been so blessed. I've spent a lot of time with Native Americans. Hopi, Dene, a man who's just became my, my grandfather, who was Iroquois. And he, he had nothing. He lives up in Niagara Falls. I mean, just dirt poor. I said Santa, that's his name, Santa, S-A-N-A, and his last name, I'm not kidding, is Claus. <laughs> he always would get lost at O'Hare, and I'd have to have him paged. Oh, that was so horrible. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> Make it easy. But I said, How, why, are you so, why are you so happy all the time? He goes, brother, because I wake up and I try to outgive God. Oh, that's beautiful, man. Tomorrow, try and outgive God. Think of what we have. He'd say that. Quit thinking about what you don't have and be thankful for what you do have. He said, we were walking in a field, beautiful field one day. He said, Kevin, this ground that we're walking on, that's the floor. The four directions, those are your walls. The sky, that's your ceiling. He said, that's your church, and that's a big church. He also used to say, when we are born, we would cry the breath of life. We cry the breath of life. And then as we get older, our breath becomes a prayer because it becomes closer to our last. Think of that. That's beautiful. I was thinking of Moses not long ago. Seriously. When Moses, today's homily, he asked God, what is your name? Moses said, Yahweh. And I thought of Santa. Every breath becomes closer to the one we're going to take for the last time. If you say Yah, 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 you're breathing out. If you say Way. And you'll do it on the way home. You're breathing in. Yao. Way. Yao. Way. From this time on now, you're going to realize you are with God with every breath. You take and exhale. You're with God. You're with God. This is just like Gerald Ford International. The next flight we're going to take is our last, and it's our final destination. And God will call you until you answer. God loves you. There's hope in this crazy world. And remember, I, God's going to look at us all. I love Padre Pio. I was reading a story once, Padre Pio, a guy comes up and says, you know, uh, I don't believe in hell. Padre said, well, you will when you get there. <laughs> I was reading another one because uh, you hear all this God is coming. Jesus is coming. I can't wait. I really, I hope it's after the Duke-Michigan State game. <laughs> but he's coming back. He's coming back. And I know God will, we all have time. We can be forgiven. I love confession, believe it or not. Now, I take Mary with me. The church was built at the crucifix. You're right. The church belongs to Jesus Christ, we're, really, you leave the church, you leave in Jesus. The confession was right there with Mary at the confessional. So I take Mary now to confession with me. And I'll even ask a priest. You can ask a priest. Go in and say, okay, if we do this, are you going to mock me? Yell at me? What's going to happen? Ask him. If you're comfortable, stay. If not, leave. Go find another confessional. Seriously, it's okay. You're a human being. But we're all going to look at God, and God is going to say, what have you done for me? Who have you loved? And I think God's going to say, you know what, Kev? 
Remember that mire on Cascade? That was me. I want you all to celebrate Lent, be hopeful, just ask Mary for anything. She loves you. And Pam, thank you so much for letting me come here. And like I've said to so many people, if you need the statue of Our Lady of the Broken, please take her. If you want to do something, let St. Thomas be an adopted church because other churches throughout the country have adopted her. She doesn't belong to me. Mary belongs to everyone. We're all broken, but we're loved by God. So I hope we can do this more. If you need more, Matthew, thank you for writing me. And thank you for taking time out of your beautiful Sunday. And I'll be downstairs and I'll sign books and we have refreshments and, and whatnot. And while I'm downstairs, if you'd like, if you'd like to come up and say a prayer or be with Our Lady of the Broken, it's really beautiful. Um, so thank you again. I appreciate it. I'll go downstairs now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. I'll be downstairs. Thank you. It takes me a long time. <laughs> Thanks, man. God bless. Thank you. Thank you again for coming. Yeah. And as Kevin said, yeah. you are welcome to come and ask Thank Mary to so intercede much. for a special oh, bless, intention. And come downstairs if you'd like. We have refreshments. Share a memory or a hope or a prayer with those around you. So thank you. And God bless you.